I'm Sean from Shooty School. Check out ShootySchool.com for complete courses and hundreds of free videos just like this one today. We're in Easy Mix and we're going to talk about basics of presets and effects controls, but there's some cute tips and tricks and observations in here that you don't want to miss before we move on to more advanced workflows. Let's get started. I'm on a new empty project. I'm sorting by name. And the first preset is one kilohertz control. I'll load it. Any controls to this preset will appear down here in the effects control area, unless you're in con compact view right here. Then you'll actually see effects control is on its own tab. Okay. Now, if I sort by number of effects, I'll see that one kilohertz control only has one effect, and the next one down, four string juice, actually has three effects. So now we can see how many effects are in each preset. So on one kilohertz control, we have one effect and we have one macro fader. This vertical, cool little gradient colored thingamajiggy is called a macro fader. So we'll be saying that a lot. It only has one control for this effect, but that's not true for every single effect preset, which is the point of this portion of the video. So let me go to sort by, I'll go to number of effects. And now all the first results in my preset list, they're all single effect presets. Let's click on a few of them and watch down here in the effects control area. That one still has a single one. 1980s reverb actually has three parameters. So remember this, if you're sorting by effect and you're showing the effects, the amount of effects, and that's how you're making your judgments, just because it says one effect doesn't mean you don't get a lot of control. You could only have one single control or you can have anywhere from one to two to three and even more. It depends on the preset. I haven't scanned through every single one of them to know, but you know, I'm seeing six controls, seven controls, maybe even more. So we're still sorting by number of effects. And I'm going to go down to order and reverse the list. And then I will hit the home key on my keyboard so I can get to the top of the list. Now, single note octave has 10 effects. Okay. And if we go to show and list, I'll select include effects info icon. And now I have this info icon I can mouse over. It says included effect, amplifier, cabinet, chorus, delay, tape, delay, distortion, fuzzifier, fat muff, EQ, low pass filter, high pass filter, gate, octaver, poly octaver, over loud reverb, hall reverb. All right. There's a lot more than 10 elements in that list. But if you look at its grouping, there's 10 effects there. Okay. Now, when you select a preset that you know has 10 effects, that doesn't mean you're going to have control over all of those effects. Right now, we just have a gate. We have what looks like the preamplifier and we have the octave controls. So that's probably only three or four different things you can control out of the 10. So there's really two things to keep in mind from the beginning of this video is when you're sorting and looking for effects and you sort by number of effects and you're looking at the info icon, uh, just a single effect preset might have more than a single control. Or if you look at the opposite spectrum, a preset with 10 effects may have a lot less than 10 controls. It's just very case sensitive. And knowing this and keeping this in mind, you're going to know to click more and examine the effects area more before moving on. Let me demystify some controls for newbies and experienced users alike. After you've selected your preset you want to check out, consider bringing your mouse over and mousing over one of the macro faders and just let it sit until a tooltip pops up. Now, it says negative 40.5 dB. Now it's telling us the exact measurement of what that macro fader setting is. That's good information. And it says it's a gate threshold. And we kind of already know that this effect is a gate and this macro fader is controlling the threshold. That's pretty straightforward. And that's how the rest of this particular preset is working as we can see here. But it gets more complicated than that because some macro faders in certain presets not only control a single attribute, sometimes they control multiple attributes for a single effect, or sometimes they control multiple effects. So and that's why this tooltip thing is really important. So I haven't covered the search bar yet, 
So if I'm looking for a particular preset and I know the exact name, I can type a portion of the exact name into that search box and find it. I'll type mono. And mono pad made stereo. I'm going to click that. Here's a great example. Look at this effects macro fader and it just says ambience. Let me mouse over that. It's at 80%. Tape delay mix and dry level, plate reverb level, inverse reverb level, and EQ. There's a ton piled into that single macro fader, and that's why it's so important to acknowledge that tooltips exist. I'm going to do a real basic signal flow gain stage introduction, which we'll do a lot more in the near future, just so I can explain this in out gain reduction and mix knob, okay? So your signal comes into Easy Mix here where it says input and you can adjust the volume of your input here, especially if it's too quiet, you can turn it up more. Then, you, then this signal comes down to the effects area and your signal enters here at the input. Now, if you don't feel like the effect you're using is prominent enough is a way to say it, you can turn your volume up yet again here to drive the effect more okay then your signal goes through the effect and gets processed and you hear a new sound and then your signal comes out of the effect and goes out to this new volume knob here so if the effect made your signal much louder and you don't like that you could turn it down or if the effect made your signal much quieter you could turn it up so there's three volume knobs already there's your input volume knob then there's another input volume knob for your effect, the preset you chose, and then after your signal gets affected, you can adjust your volume yet again. There's three places to adjust volume, and it kind of gets dangerous. We'll talk about it more in the future, but it's great that all these volume knobs are here. After your signal leaves this volume knob, it goes by the gain reduction meter. Now, if you're using a dynamic effect like a compressor or a limiter, that will take the peaks of your waves or of your audio signal and duck them down. They'll duck them down just a little bit or they'll completely flatten them out. It depends on the result you're looking for. But when that happens, this reading right here in decibels will tell you how much it's turning or compressing or limiting your signal down. So that might say negative 3 dB or negative 10 dB, depending on how much quieter you're making your signal. And this meter will bounce up and down when that happens so you know when it's reducing your volume by this amount now that's just a brief introduction we'll see more of that in the future and mix is how you mix your affected signal with your dry signal coming in to easy mix so a lot of cases we leave this at 100 percent like when you send a guitar through a preamplifier you don't want to hear that clean guitar anymore you just want to hear you know, the distortion, for example. Or a reason why this wouldn't be 100%, let's say it'll be 50, you can uh, double click any of these numbers here and type in your own value. Let's say I wanna mix at 50% of just one of a million examples. Maybe I have a reverb that I like on my voice, but it's too thick, it's too wet. So I want to mix 50% of my dry voice from the input with 50% of the effects on my voice. And that would be a 50% mix. And as you continue on, you might realize that these values really need to stay the same. You don't want, you want to remind yourself to never change them or another user on your computer might change them. So you can actually lock the input volume and you can lock the mix volume. And we'll get into LUFs in the future, but that's just a measuring tool of how loud your music is over time. Last two tiny details is I'm just going to scroll through this with my down arrow. I'm looking for two types of toggle switches. There's one. Here's an ambience toggle switch. And okay, that turns ambience on and off. But remember, you can always mouse over things to get more information. And this actually toggles two things, uh, inverse reverb and spring reverb. So you can see how tool tips are super important. These toggle knobs are on a lot of different presets. Some presets have many of them. And there's one other type of toggle knob, which does the same thing. It just does it to a group. This is kind of it right here. 
here's a toggle switch for this whole drive effect. It's just that it's in this shape because you have a macro fader under it. It's just not a toggle button floating out in the middle of nowhere. So now I can turn off the drive entirely. And sometimes you'll see the toggle switches like this. They'll toggle on and off a group of macro faders. Let's do key commands real quick. There's only two of them. If I have high mouse sensitivity, which I do, and I'm dragging this amount macro fader up and I want a really particular setting, but I'm having a hard time getting it to 43%. I'm keep going by it. I can hold shift on the keyboard and now my mouse is instantly less sensitive and now I can make fine adjustments. That's holding shift on keyboard. Now, if I made an adjustment and I want to return to the default state of that macro fader, I can hold control plus click on PC. I'm holding control and I'll click and it jumps up to the default state or that's option on Mac. Not command, but option on Mac. I'm Sean from Shooty School. Come back to me for more free Easy Mix 3 videos in this course. Check out shootyschool.com for full courses and hundreds of free videos just like this one. If you ever want to see me ever again, hit the subscribe button. If you ever want to make my day, do comment below even if it's just to say hi or contribute at shootyschool.com if you appreciate my efforts. Rock on.